Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I have my old phone on this charger and it keeps making noise. I am doing great today. I hope you are. Just trying to get in my little spot here. I have a little spot where I can lean on my elbow and it's just really comfortable. I'm trying to get my music set up. I guess I could have all this stuff done and then you wouldn't have to wait for me to get all my stuff set up but seems like right before I start this something happens I have to go and put something on for my child to watch or you know just something happens but anyway I am glad to be here it is Friday thank God it's Friday Tomorrow is Saturday, but Saturday is a work day for me. I'll have to work tomorrow. I'll have to do some laundry when I get through with this. But anyway, I got groceries in today. I got them put up. I'm really happy. Got a good deal on meat today, so I'm happy. We have food for at least two weeks, maybe three. Sometimes when I buy a lot of meat I have food for three weeks okay so what I want to talk to you today tonight tonight about is um, the words that God woke me up with this morning is who brings justice what was the question who brings justice so my my answer was well God that's you you bring justice and so I thought we'd look up some scriptures. I thought we would read what, um, oh, we can't look up scriptures. I don't have my Bibles over there. I think I have a Bible app on here. I just used my phone tonight, unless I took it off. I don't think I did. I really like the, really like the real Bible. I'm gonna get it. And I'll be right back. I need my notebook anyway. And then I printed off some scripture and I can't read where they're at. I mean, it's like. So I'm going to be guessing where things are because it's so tiny. It's so tiny. But um, anyway, we're going to do the best we can. It's Friday. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. It will be fine. I watch some people on YouTube and that's always the ladies thing. It will it will be fine. We'll figure it out. It will be fine. So it will be. Alright, I'm gonna get my Bible and I'll be right back. Because I don't have the Bible app on here anymore. I took a lot of stuff off so I could use it for my son. Now I'm ready. Okay. Alright, well again, I hope you had an awesome day. We're going to figure out this scripture. I already have three on uh, one thing that I want to talk about, and then I kind of wanted to touch on something else. But let's open up in prayer. Well, we're just going to do a really short one. We'll do a longer one later. That is wanting to turn that off, and I don't want it to do that. Okay. Got to get my little. I have my little spot. I really like it. I can put my feet up. I got my arm over here. I can. It's just what I like. Okay. Now I got my music going. Gonna have it going in a minute. I'm so sorry. I feel kind of dis. Dis, um, organized. I feel disorganized right now. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just uh, thank you 
for all that you are and for all that you do, God. We know that you do bring the justice, God, and we can trust you. We can trust you for whenever that perfect timing is that you can bring the justice and that people that have been wronged will receive your justice. And God, we just uh, we just want to pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God, and we pray for the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would uh, give them peace, comfort, and strength. And I want to lift up a family that had to put their loved one on hospice today, God. I just pray that you would be with this family, that they would feel your presence as they walk through this and um, say goodbye to their loved one knowing that they will see them someday who knows when that's of course your timing too God we thank you for being our creator our sustainer our protector our provider God we thank you for caring for us and loving us God and we know that you are the righteous judge God that you will come and you will and judge the unrighteous but you are loving and kind and compassionate God and forgiving also and you are long suffering you want none to perish so God we just give you this time that you can teach us about your word and in Jesus name we pray Amen okay I'm going to get my music going here I'm going to listen to something different on my list. It's not a very long list, so can't get too picky. Okay, I'm going to listen to Love Like Jesus. Gonna Love Like Jesus. Okay, by Rut Walker Band. Okay, so this is what I shared on Facebook today. <laughs> Only 30 minutes ago. So I've been kind of busy today. Okay, so I found this song on YouTube this afternoon. I have never heard this song before. It's called God of Justice. And it's really good. It's by Tim Hughes. And I believe it fits my thoughts today. God's words for me this morning. Who brings justice? My answer would be God. The balances in our courts are not even anymore. And someone took the blindfold off of Lady Justice. So that's kind of what I was thinking about today is that the courts, many of the courts are corrupt. Many of them are very corrupt. And uh, Lady Justice is blindfolded because um, she is not, uh, justice is supposed to be blind. It's not supposed to matter who you are or what you have. It is for everybody the same. That's how it's supposed to be. So many that should receive justice do not because of who they are. The corrupt and well-known receive most of, the, most of the justice. The scales are out of balance. These are the things that I have been thinking of today. Um, in God's eyes, all are the same, no matter who we are and what we have. He cares more about what's in our hearts and if Jesus is your Savior also, the worldly values do not match up with God's values. I see so much the unbalanced weights of Lady Justice. You know, Lady Justice has weights. She has scales in her hand. You know, they're, they are, um, somebody has their finger on the scale, and I'll explain that to you later through Scripture. So it's not balanced. It's not balanced weights. Um, these are the things that I've been thinking of today. Oh, I already read that. I see so much. The unbalanced weights of Lady Justice. You see, our pledge says that we have liberty and justice for all. But all do not receive the same justice. God asks us to be the hands and feet of Jesus also. He wants us to be a part of uh, 
helping, helping with the justice, helping the people that are needy and poor, helping them get what they should have. So, um, where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? God gives the same justice to all through His Son, Jesus. He does. We all get justice through Jesus. Are you saved today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. God will exact justice through His wrath someday. So do not be left behind. Be saved now. And justice is coming and it will be for all that are stuck in unrighteousness. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, I would read the rest, but it's the same that I put on there all the time. So anyway, these are the things that I've been thinking about today as, as I do things. It's kind of how my mind works. My mind starts off with a thought and everything else just kind of falls into place with that. So when I shared this today, I shared it with a picture of Lady Liberty. And if you would look at Lady Liberty, she has a blindfold on and she's holding a pair of scales which means that everyone is supposed to get equal justice. Like everyone is supposed to get the same justice, but that's not the way it is anymore. That's the way it used to be, but it is not anymore. Depends on who you are. It depends on how much money you have. It depends on who's, who's defending you. It, you know, there's so many variables. Okay. It used to just depend on what you did, but now it's who you are. Alright, I'm not ready for this yet. Okay, so let's look up some scriptures. I hope I can read these. I hope I can really figure this out on the other side. On the really small print. Okay. So, in Psalms 89.14... it says this justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne mercy and truth shall go before thy face blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk O Lord in the light of thy countenance so justice and judgment belong to God those things belong to God So if you can't get justice here, God will bring justice. He will bring justice. Okay, let's see where the second verse is. There's lots of verses about this. I didn't think that a lot of them fit very well. Okay, Jeremiah 22:15. Jeremiah 22.15 22.15 says, Shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord. So God is going to... He's going to judge the cause for the poor and needy. The people that have not been um, afforded the same justice as others. God is going to take care of that. He will take care of that. Okay, so in Ezekiel, Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel 45, 9. See if I can find Ezekiel. Oh, yay. 
I like it when I get them in the right order. It makes it easier. 45, nine. Thus saith the Lord God, let it suffice you, O princes of, e of Israel. Remove violence and spoil and execute judgment and justice. Take away your executions <clears throat> from my people saith the Lord God. And this goes right into um, what I'm talking about. The scales are not balanced anymore. You shall have just balances and a just ephah and a just bath. The ephah and the bath shall be of one measure that the bath may contain the tenth part of a homer and the ephah, ephah, I don't know how to pronounce that, the tenth part of a homer, and the measure thereof shall be after the homer. And the shekel shall be twenty geras, geras, twenty shekels, five and twenty shekels, fifteen shekels shall be your Manna, this is the oblation that ye shall offer. The sixth part of the epaw concerning the ordinance of oil. Okay, well, he is talking about all these things, but what I'm talking about, the scales are unbalanced, is that there are scriptures in the Bible that talk about that someone has their hand or their thumb on the on the balance well that's not balanced then it's it's balancing more for them like more money for them so I think that's we have a lot of judges that have their hand on the scale and it's balanced more in the favor of whoever the judge is getting money from I hate to say that but it's the truth you know, I'm not going to call out any any judges or any courts, but the, many, many of our courts are corrupt. Many. Okay, so let's... But that's okay. Because God is going to give justice to those that deserve justice. And He's going to do judgment on those that deserve judgment. So let's... Uh, Let's see if I can figure this out on these that are really small. Um, Jeremiah, I think 5-1. See, it's, it's like so tiny. It has the scripture, but it doesn't have where it is. Jeremiah 5-1. Then we're going to talk about the scales a little bit. We talked about that God will bring justice. And God will bring judgment too. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that is not right. Oh, it may be. And he executeth judgment that seeketh the truth. No. Okay, what is this one? Proverbs 2023. Alright. I'm sorry. Um 2023. Proverbs 2023, I think. Uh, that was right, but it was a different... Okay. I'm going to scoot back up to 21. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord. 
How can a man then understand his own way? So the the false balance is not good. He doesn't like the false balance. He wants things balanced. He wants the scales balanced. He wants them to be fair. And there are a lot of things that are not fair anymore. Uh, Proverbs 14, 13, I hope. Proverbs 14, 13. Nope, that's not it. Alright, well I didn't figure that one out. Proverbs 1611. Ah. Proverbs 1611. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the throne is established by righteousness. So a just weight. The Lord likes a just weight. They belong to the Lord. We'll see if we can find another one. Maybe one more. Oh my. Right, I'm not sure where this is. I'm just going to read it. Is there yet a man in the wicked house, along with treasures of wickedness, and a short measure that is cursed? Can I justly can I justify wicked scales and a bag of deceptive weights? For the rich men of the city are full of violence. Her residents speak lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. And it says read more, but I cannot, I can't read what it is, where it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's too tiny, and it's like in gray. Well, I would like to find one more to read. Hmm. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measurement of weight or capacity. You shall have just balances, just weights, and a just ephah, and a just hen. I am the Lord you got, your God who brought you out of e the land of Egypt. So, these unequal balances are not of God. They're out of uh, deception. It's deception. People that are pretending that it doesn't matter to God, but it does matter to God, as you can tell by what I read. And I wish this would have been like much better than it was. Let me see if I can find one more that I can that I can find. Well, this Isaiah 59.4, let's look at it. None for none. Okay. I'm going to start at the beginning. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverses, per, perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive 
mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's webs web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed beneath out into a viper. Uh, their, webs, their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting, and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity for brightness, but we walk in the darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we have no eyes to st we stumble. At noonday, as in the night, we are in desolate places as dead men. So that just goes more and more on talking about if you are not walking in God's ways. And that's what many of these people of corruption are not walking in God's ways. And God will bring justice. Some of these people have done unthinkable things. Just things that we cannot even imagine in our minds in order to um, please the father of lies. I'm not going to say who that is, but most people that are Christians know who that is. So they have done horrific rituals to please him. And so that's kind of what it's talking about they run to evil they make haste to shed innocent blood um, I'm not going to read any more but this is all full of the things that the things that unrighteous people do But you know, if we walk in God's ways, if we walk in the truth, if we walk in the ways of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, and if we accept Jesus as our Savior, then we don't have to worry about this. And God will protect us from these people too. He really will. And they will have a big demise. Their demise will be huge. Their failures will be huge. Because they're not following after God. We need to follow after God. If we want God's blessings, we need to be obedient to what He is calling us to do. And so if, if God has a calling on you, then please be obedient to Him. Because you're going to be miserable until you are. Because He has chosen you to do something to further His kingdom that He wants you to do. I did not grow up thinking, hey, I'm going to be sitting in front of two cameras talking about Jesus someday. But here I am because I'm trying to be obedient to what God wants. And so... Who brings justice? God brings justice. But more than that, God is going to bring judgment too. God is going to bring judgment. And so maybe tomorrow night I might talk about who brings judgment. Because I won't be here Sunday night. I'm going to help with the youth after church class. And... Um, I'll be at church most of the day. But that's okay. I love church. I'm thankful that we're able to go. I'm so thankful that we are not shut out of church anymore. 
Okay, so if you have anything, if there are any scriptures that you go, hey, that would have been really good, please put them in the comments. And I'm sorry I stumbled through that, and I'm sorry I didn't look up those scriptures beforehand. I meant to, but I ran out of time. Okay. All good truth in here. This is our B-I-B-L-E, our basic instructions before leaving earth. But we're not going to know what's in here if we don't take time and read it. And so, I read it every day. I do not, I will never, ever know everything about it. It will never, ever all be clear. And there won't be some day that I'll sit down here and go, Hey, good news, I know everything about the Bible because I never will. There's so much to learn. God has so much to teach us. But we have to read His Word to learn it. Okay, so let's read my notes from this morning, which we're talking a lot about what I just talked to you about. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings. Child, new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day to get supplies in your house, child. It was a beautiful day today. A little chilly, but really beautiful. Uh, thank you for another new day of mercies and blessings, of opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, God. And he said, Child, the dominoes are falling quickly. Arrests are happening, but will there be justice for the, for the heinous crimes of those arrested? He said, if not, then I will bring justice soon. They will not get away with the things they have done. Like rats in their tunnels all over the world. Nothing is hidden from me underground. Oh, if they would turn back to me, but they will not. Their hearts are hard and they are blind and deaf to what is good and natural. And I, I kind of see that. I really do. Because some of these people, they, they do not know right from wrong. Either they were never taught, or God has already turned them over to their reprobate minds. He said, Child, the scales are not level. A finger is upon the scales of justice, and her blindfold has been removed. There is no blind justice anymore for your courts, and the courts of the world are corrupt and only work for the corrupt ones. Many judges put in place for just this moment. Yeah, I see that. Many judges were paid to be where they are right now. Got this piece of hair that's sticking out. Um, I showed you this in South Texas. That is why I wanted you to go and see. There will never be a favorable hearing in that court. You could feel the great spiritual warfare taking place. Child, the level of corruption has to be removed. The key is the innocent children. Many are corrupt from this disgusting industry. This industry must be dismantled for my peace to return. Looking the other way does not make it leave. It only makes them think they, that people do not care. I showed you a short vision of two children in chains in a street waiting to be sold. Child, this happens every day. It is a commodity for them. They have no love and compassion for these innocent children. They look on them as they are animals and treat them like they are. They will hate the day that I bring my justice upon them. When I bring my wrath, so these innocents have justice. Many of these past children are now safe with me, and soon all children will be with me, and out of their evil hands. I bring justice if the courts are unable, and my justice is final also. Soon I will turn them over to their debased minds forever. Their minds will drive them crazy. 
I see and hear all of this clearly, God, and my heart is broken for your innocent children. I am trying to do my part to shine a light and be a voice for them that I think them, but I think many do not believe or care because it is not their children. But how very quickly it can be. I said thank you for meeting me and giving me a message to share each day. People are oblivious to all that goes on while they sleep. The massive evil that takes place. Thank you for calling me as your child. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. The Great Awakening Revival is about to happen. And then the rapture, when all my children are sealed, the reunion also will be spectacular. All of my children, especially all of my innocents, will be home and safe. And I said, Maranatha God, I will keep shining a light and being a voice for your innocence. And so that's kind of what I feel like part of my calling is. Is to help shine a light on human trafficking. Many people don't even know it exists. And I know I've done a couple of lessons on it. But... I'm also going to an event on March the 27th here at our high school. And uh, I'm going to see what I can do to maybe volunteer for this organization that I found out today is in Fort Worth. That's just kind of too close not to be able to do something to help. And I know I can give them money, but I want to be a voice. I want to be a voice for one of those kids that doesn't have a voice because when these children are taken, they are silenced, and they are treated worse than animals. We treat our animals better than these children are treated. And there is no excuse for it, for people to treat children, innocent children like that. Innocent children are to be loved. Just like Jesus said, let suffer the children to come to me. He loves the children. And if he loves the children, then you know he does not want any of them hurt. God loves the children. He loves them so much. God does not approve of abortion. This is not something that in his word says that is okay. People can be forgiven of it if they do it. That's something that can be forgiven of. But we should not be putting our money, our tax dollars, into abortion. And I believe that we are fixing to get a huge tax bill. Our expenses are already going up. Gas has already gone up. We're fixing to get a huge tax bill like the UK or Canada. They want to make our health like that. It won't work. It doesn't work for them. UK and Canada come over here to go to the doctor because they don't want to wait for months to see a doctor. I don't want our health care system to be like that. And our representatives are standing against that, but they're outnumbered. They're outnumbered. And where we're going is not going to be good. It is not. Our prayer is for people to get saved. The more people that are saved, the bigger of a majority we have that stand with God, that stand with God's Word. The more people that are saved, the more people that stand with God's Word. No matter what denomination, God doesn't care about denominations. I think we'll do the E-band tonight because we need to offer salvation to someone. Someone needs to know that God wants them to be part of his kingdom family and he's inviting them th in. And so this is an invitation. Well, I put the, I was reading the Spanish side. All right, no, I need the English. I need the English side. I might could read some of it. But I, I wouldn't. 
too very good at it. I think I could say all those words though. I did take Spanish in junior high. Started it in high school, but I don't know. I just couldn't. Just didn't work out. Okay. So the first color is gold. Well, first, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants you to have a personal he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So Jesus and God are one. Okay. And then we got the black and the question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death and separation from God forever. So the first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, I got an answer for you. It's in the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty of all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. That is great news. So the white with the red question mark, the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So the second question Mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus, Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And so... If you would like to be saved, then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay my sins and that you raised him from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. I'm listening to uh, Build My Life by Pat. Barrett. I really like that song. Okay, so we are to green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the area of growth. Okay, so you have the heart. 
the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And so the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. And then the little kneeling guy is prayer. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. So this little water droplet, when we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. So then this is fellowship. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It is. Pray for God to send you to the right church. Make sure they are preaching out of the Bible. Make sure they are teaching about Jesus. Okay, and so this one is share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So we want to share this good news. We don't want to keep this good news to ourselves. We want to share it. Because Jesus is coming to get us and take us to heaven. And it's not, you know, he is coming and we must be ready. It's going to be so fast. It may be faster than that. It's going to be a twinkling of an eye. I don't know how long it takes for an eye to twinkle. I know blinking is very fast. And so it's going to be so fast that you cannot get saved. So if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. And you are now, the angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So salvation is exciting. Like the bracelet says, read your Bible, pray, and find some praise music. I, I throw praise in there too because I think that, well, I know that it's important to God. It's in His Word. Praise is important to Him. Thank give, thanksgiveness, uh, gratefulness, those are important to God. So be sure and do that too. And um, I was thinking of something else. Start in Matthew in the Bible. Don't start in Genesis and get to Leviticus and go, I can't do this. So Leviticus is, it's hard to get through. I've gotten through it twice. I started a third time through the Bible and I got to Job and um, because of fear I didn't finish Job because the last time I did that, the last time I read it cover to cover, um, our son got sick right after I finished Job and I was thinking something bad was going to happen and I know that's stupid and that doesn't show great faith. Um, I am not perfect by any means. And uh, sometime I might just pick up Job and read Job and finish. And then I'll be, you know, read through three times. But I have done it twice. And it is a tremendous blessing when you start in Genesis and read all the way through Revelation. But that's not where new Christians need to start. They need to start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Learn who Jesus is. Uh, read Jesus' words. That is most important for new Christians. Okay, so I did everything. I uh, shared scripture. I uh, shared my notes. I uh, did a salvation message. Um, it's time to bless and pray and get off. I'm going to do a schedule one of these days, and I might know. But I've, I've been doing this for nearly a year. Um... Not consistently every night, but pretty much most nights. Okay, so in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee 
and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Wow, we need peace. We all need some peace. We really, really do. I need a drink of water. I have this huge... It's purple. It looks blue in one, but it's it's really purple. Hmm. My color must be off on my YouTube video. world's best mom because I am the world's best mom not really I didn't buy it for myself my daughter bought it for me um okay so um let's pray let's pray what do we want to pray for I'm gonna pray for justice I'm gonna pray for justice for people that have been wrong um to do with the thing that happened at the Capitol on January 6th. There are people that are in jail without um, the ability to get bail. They won't give them bail. I don't think that's right. I'm sorry. Their crime is no worse than any other crime. I don't think that's right. Um, but I'm not in charge. But anyway. Some of them were just... I mean, they didn't even do anything wrong. They just went in the Capitol. And the Capitol Police escorted many in, too. So, there's a lot about that one thing, that one incident, that we haven't heard all the truth about. Because a lot of it doesn't make any sense. So, anyway. Let's pray for those people that are in jail. That they would get that the Lady Justice would get her blindfold put back on and that everyone would be treated the same. That's what's supposed to happen is everyone's supposed to be treated the same. But that's not what's happening these days. Alright, well I can't say too much on this or they'll... I might have already said too much. Okay, well let's pray. Let's get off of here. God, we just come to you, and we are just so thankful, God, that you are you are the righteous judge, God. And there are going to be many, many that you will not be happy. You will not take any pleasure in pouring out your judgment on and your wrath. Because you created these people, too to be part of your kingdom but they chose not to God we thank you that you chose us as your children help us to walk in the light of Jesus help us to reflect the love and the compassion of Jesus help us to where we can help people receive justice help us to walk humbly I'll lift up all the sick people, Josie and her co-worker Maria, her sister, and Mike. I just pray for healing for them, that they will feel much better. I know that wind is not real helpful outside right now. So I just pray for them to feel better. I pray for the family that I saw on Facebook. God, I just lift them up to you. You know all the t details, and you know, you know the future. And I just pray that you would be with them. I pray for a Jesus movement, God, in our country, that no one can stop. I pray for so many people to get saved, just thousands and thousands, God. And that your name would be proclaimed again that the name of Jesus would be proclaimed and that the Holy Spirit would move on many, many lives. God, we just pray. We pray for um, we pray to be more in your presence, God. We pray more to testify about your goodness and we pray 
that you would help us to encourage others, God. Heaven is going to be spectacular. There will never be a place here that even compares to the reward that you have waiting for us. But we must accept your Son. He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's exactly what I'm listening to right now. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. Your perfect timing, God. I'm not going to say it's crazy. I'm not going to say it's a coincidence. It is your perfect timing always and your confirmation for what I'm praying. And thank you, God. We just give you all the glory, honor, and praise in all things. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hmm. So good. Some conversation with God is so good. You cannot beat it. There is no peace like communicating with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like it. Well, hey, my friend Josie, I'm fixing to leave. <laughs> I'm done. My friend Josie comes at the very end. I even already prayed, but I prayed for you. I prayed for you to feel better. How do you feel? Do you feel better? I've been praying for you. You feel my prayers? You feel my prayers? <laughs> I am doing great. How are you doing? I just got through talking about God bringing justice. Are you feeling better now? I think you are. You said yes. I want to find a way to get us both on here, Josie. Oh, my day was good. I went and picked up groceries. I've gotten quite lazy. I just I have personal shoppers that I send them my list and they personally shop for me and I go and pick them up at Brookshire's curbside. It's pretty awesome. I don't have to drag Seth into the store. i got to go do some laundry in a little bit. I noticed that Ricky doesn't have any clean clothes. So i got to get his clothes washed and get Seth put up. All right. Well, I gotta get off of here. I gotta gotta go um, fix us something to eat. He had a big milkshake though this afternoon. Oh, your stomach hurts. Mm, I'm sorry. I had barbecue nachos today that I made here at home. I had some barbecue chicken. I just made me some nachos. I already ate dinner. Well, I got to get off of here, Josie. I got to go do laundry and I've got to go uh, feed Seth. I already fed myself. I always feed myself before I come in here. Okay, so God bless you all and your families. Um, have an awesome rest of your night and have an awesome tomorrow. You can call me if you want. If you want to call me, you can. Um, much love. I'm learning how to do this. 
much love and cyber hugs and good night